In this video, I'm going to show you how to diagnose each critical system in your Amana washing machine, or for that matter, any washing machine that has a large timer cycle selection knob with these six tic-tac shaped LED lights below it. And I'll make suggestions on how to use your findings to repair your machine. The best part, everything I show you here is free and easy for you to fix yourself with a few common household tools. Hi, I'm Chip and welcome to my channel where I'll show you how to fix your washer and dryer and also how you can start and run your own successful washing machine and dryer repair business. So let's get started. If your washing machine has these six LED lights, it's probably made by Whirlpool and has one of these mini Whirlpool brands placarded on the control panel. The first thing you want to do is retrieve your service manual. Now you can find this manual taped to the inside top left corner of your washing machine. It's a bit difficult to retrieve because it's probably sealed inside a plastic bag and it's, that plastic bag is glued firmly to the cabinet. But there's an easy way to get to this if you have this amount of washer. First, go behind it and remove these two screws from the back of the machine and you can also remove this wiring harness and pressure hose cover. Now you want to slide the top forward about two inches and while lifting at, at the front edge of it, kind of wiggle until it comes free of the hooked tabs that keep it secure on the front. Now lift it up from the front, be sure to fit these slots into the two tabs on the back to keep the lid and console from falling. Hold the lid closed while you do this because it'll fly open unless you have a hand on it. And better yet, you can tape it shut with a strip of masking tape or duct tape. Now you should be able to see the manual and get to it much easier. This service manual is just full of great information about your machine, but today we're going to focus on one area, putting your machine into the manual diagnostic mode and checking each system in a sequential pattern. To get your machine into diagnostic mode, you can follow along here or look at the page that says activating the service diagnostic test modes. This is going to be on page two of the Amana manual. So to begin this test, we need to have the machine plugged in and sitting in standby mode. And this is when all the LEDs are off. If you have one or more of the lights illuminated, don't worry, just hold down that start button until all the lights go out. If you've done this for about 30 seconds or more and the lights are still illuminated, then you might have a control board problem. But if you've done this correctly, all the lights are going to be out. Now it doesn't matter where you start this procedure from as long as you move the cycle selection dial in a counterclockwise motion. I always turn the knob to the left and stop on the 12 o'clock position, but that's just my preference. So let's turn the dial counterclockwise any number of detents until we stop on 12 for this demonstration. After we've done this, we're going to turn the dial clockwise for three clicks or an in this case uh, at the three o'clock position. Now we'll turn the dial back left one click or the two o'clock position, then turn it one click back clockwise, stopping on three o'clock again. And if you've done this successfully, all the LEDs except the lid lock will be flashing. If not, just turn the dial counterclockwise, stop on 12 again and start all over. Now each click should have about a half second pause between them. You can try speeding up or slowing down, but with a little practice, uh, you'll be able to enter the diagnostic test mode successfully each time. Okay, if all your test lights are flashing, we will want to put the machine into the manual test mode. It's gonna be on page four of the Amana manual. And to do this, we will need to turn the dial clockwise until the spin and the done LEDs are on. And this will be the second and third light from the right. All right, with these two lights illuminated, press the start button. All the lights should go out, and now we have entered the manual test mode. And we're gonna test each of the washer's components sequentially. We can follow the instructions on the page nine of the manual or we can just follow along right here. So the first system we want to test is the lid lock. With all the LEDs off, if we press the start button, the lid should lock and the red LED all the way to the right should illuminate. If it doesn't and you see all the LEDs flashing momentarily, then the lid lock has failed and that's the problem with your, with your machine. Or it may illuminate but start clicking on and off without any input from you. In either case, the lid lock needs to be replaced. To cancel the lid lock test, press the start button once again and you should return to the state where all the LEDs are off. The next test in the sequence is the cold water valve. So turn the dial clockwise one click and the done LED should illuminate. Now with the lid open, press the start button and observe whether the cold water valve opens and a good steady stream of cold water enters the tub. Now if no water or an insufficient amount of water or just a dribble flows into the tub and the valve body is plugged up or faulty, it needs to be re replaced or cleaned. Push the start button again to stop the flow of water. Now we're going to test the hot water valve. 
from its current position turn the dial clockwise again another click until the spin light is illuminated open the lid and press the start button to open the hot water valve and just like the cold water valve if you don't get a good steady flow of hot water then you should replace the valve press the start button once again to shut off the valve and now we can move on to the next test now if you're following along on page 9 in the service manual you're going to see that the next four clockwise clicks don't do anything and they're reserved for future development however if you click the dial a fifth time the rinse spin and done lights will illuminate to enter the train pump test when you do this, pushing the start button will activate the drain pump and the water that you ran into the tub during the cold and the hot water valve test will be pumped out. If it doesn't pump out, then you will need to investigate why the drain pump isn't working and possibly replace it. Push the start button again to turn off the drain pump. Now, in order to test the spin and agitate functions, we'll have to lock the lid. So take note of the position of the dial where it is right now, and then you want to turn it counterclockwise until all the LEDs are off again. And then you can push the start button to lock the lid and illuminate the red lid lock LED. Now you can turn the dial clockwise back to where you were, and then you want to turn it two more clicks clockwise until the wash, the done, and the lid lock LEDs are all illuminated. When you push the start this time, you should be in the low spin mode. You can raise the top up like you did to find the service manual and observe the inside of the machine. It may take up to a minute or more for the shift actuator to position the splutch for the spin cycle and for the motor to spin the basket up to speed. Push the start button again to stop the test. If the test failed, you might have an issue with either the shift actuator or the splutch mechanism. If it passes, I usually go on to the agitation test because if the machine passes a low spin uh, test, it's almost always gonna pass a high speed spin test. So once the basket has stopped spinning, you can move to the agitation test. You can't begin this test until the basket has stopped spinning. So let's click that dial clockwise until the wash, spin, and done lights are illuminated. Push start and wait for the shift actuator to move the splutch into the agitation mode. And once everything is in place, the washer should begin agitating. Now if the shift Shifter hasn't completed the change and the machine starts agitating with both the spin basket and the agitator engaged, then you're going to have a problem with either the shift actuator or the splutch. This will result in very short movements of the agitator and the tub at the same time. They should move independently of each other and if they don't, you'll have to remove the actuator and see if the splutch arms move freely. If the splutch arm moves freely, then uh, change the actuator. If they don't, change the splutch. Sometimes you have to change both. They can both fail. So if you've done all these tests and everything works as it should, you probably have an, another problem. And this is usually a fault with the control board. Some of the symptoms of this is the washer will stop in mid-cycle, refuse to advance. Or perhaps the washer completes a load, but five minutes or so after it stops, the water valves open like it's going to wash again. In these cases, a new control board will fix the problem, but usually the cost may not be worth the value of the old machine. If you found value in this video, please hit that like button. And if you've earned your subscription, I thank you. Check out.